Hey guys, it's Tiffany from SuperEasyMath.com. Today I have a surprise for you guys. Normally I I've been coming out with all these new videos lately. Well anyway, I was looking at one of my files and I had a whole bunch of like older videos of mine. Remember how I have like those older videos where it's like a gray background and blue um, numbers on it. Anyway, I had a few of those that I recorded way back in the day that I never formally edited. So anyway, I went ahead and edited it and I was like, hey, I'm going to show them and I'm going to let that video roll out one day. And so this video today is over two-step equations. Enjoy. Hey guys, it's Tiffany. Today, I'm gonna show you how to solve two-step equations. Solving two-step equations. When solving two-step equations, you wanna remember that your main goal is to put the variable, which is just a big fancy way of saying the letter, on one side of the equal sign by itself. In order to do that, you need to remember to use the inverse operations to isolate the variable. The inverse operations are the opposite operations. So the opposite of addition is subtraction and vice versa, and the opposite of multiplication is division and vice versa. Let's move on to example number one and solve our first two-step equation. Example number one. If you remember from the last slide, I explained that getting the variable on one side of the equal sign is your main goal. So right now we have a 4 over here with the P, which is the variable. We also have a 10 over here with the P. So we need to look at the signs or the type of operation that connect those numbers, the 4 and the P, on this side of the equal sign and do the opposite of them. So right now we need to add 10. That's what the problem has. So the, the opposite of adding 10 would be subtracting 10. So minus 10. And you have to do that to both sides. This cancels out, so I'm left with 4p equals 70 minus 10 is 60. Now I need to divide both sides by 4 because right now the relationship between the 4 and the p is multiplication. So the opposite of multiplication is division. So I divide by 4 here, divide by 4 here, cross out my 4s bring down the P because that's all that's left on this side. My equal sign wasn't touched so I just bring it down and now 60 divided by 4 is let's see if you don't know what it is you can just come to the side of your paper and a lot of times you're gonna find yourself in situations like this you're gonna be like uh, I'm not really sure you might get to come out to the side of your paper no problem. 4 goes into 6 one time it's 4 you subtract you get 2 bring down your 0 4 goes into 25 times. So 4 goes into 60 15 times. So the answer to example number 1 is P equals 15. I'm going to plug in the 15 to my original problem to make sure I solved correctly. I'm going to start by drawing a little line. So now I'm going to just do my checking over on this side. So 4 and I'm going to separate my 15 by parentheses so I know that's multiplication. If I didn't put that there then it would look like 415. Um, you could also put like a dot in between it or a multiplication sign. Um, I'm just going to do parentheses. Plus 10 equals 70. So just to make sure this is clear, all I did was write the original problem that was out here in blue. Except for I didn't write the P again. I put the actual value that I think P is. So now I'm going to solve this. And if whatever I get after working out all the numbers on this side of the equal sign equals 70, then that means my 15 is correct. If I don't get 70, that means my 15 is incorrect. So 4 times 15 is 60, and I want to add 10. 60 plus 10 is 70, so 70 does equal 70, so that means I did solve that one correctly. Let's move on to example number 2. Example number two, I have negative 3p minus 6 equals 24. I'm going to start by getting rid of the 6. Usually it's easier to get rid of the part of the equation that's kind of by itself. Right now the negative 3 and the p, they're like a little more stuck to each other. So I go ahead and get everything that's like a minus something or a plus something that's on the same side of the equal sign with the variable. Um, that's going to just simplify things for me. So I'm going to add 6 to both sides. This cancels out, so the only thing that's left on this side is negative 3p equals 30. Now I'm going to divide both sides by negative 3. 
this side is left with p because the three and the negative part that part gets crossed out because they cancel each other out so I'm only left with the p over here equal stays the same and then I have 30 divided by negative 3 and that's negative 10 if you're not so good with negatives or you haven't started working with negative numbers as much you could solve this problem the exact same way without the negative sign in front of this 3 and you would have gotten a positive 10 here everything would have been exactly the same except everywhere you see a negative sign it wouldn't have been that is not always the case so don't think anytime you see a negative you can just take it off and get an answer it's going to be the same it just happens to work out this way with this problem but if you should know um, how to deal with integers a little better but you're not quite sure you can go check out my adding and subtracting or multiplying and dividing integers videos and it goes into a lot of detail on how to do that I'm assuming you know how to do it here so I'm not really going over those rules I'm just writing it down now I'm gonna plug my answer that I got in for P into the original problem so I'm gonna start by drawing the line I'm gonna work out my answer over here so I have negative 3p minus 6 equals 24 I'm gonna rewrite it instead of writing the P I'm gonna write my negative 10 negative 3 negative 10 minus 6 equals 24 now I know my rules for integers and it says negative 3 times negative 10 is just gonna be a positive 30 subtract 3 excuse me subtract 6 here and then that gives me 24 so 30 minus 6 does equal 24 so that means I did solve this problem correctly so here's a check mark for myself let's move on to example number three example number three I'm gonna get rid of this nine because this looks a little more complicated so let me get everything um, that is not touching the variable directly get rid of all that okay so this is a minus nine or it's really a negative nine which is the same thing as minus nine so I'm gonna add nine and that happens to both sides get rid of that this leaves me with P over three which equals 60 now now this is P divided by 3 so I'm gonna multiply both sides by 3 this goes away multiply this side by 3 I'm left with just a P over here and over here I have 60 times 3 which with which is 180 okay so now I'm gonna rewrite my problem but I'm gonna plug in 180 for P to see if I solved correctly so I have negative 9 plus 180 over 3 equals 51 so I'm gonna start by dividing this fraction first so it's gonna be a little easier for me to work with a uh, number here plus this negative 9 and so I have negative 9 here plus and if you remember a fraction which is like an improper fraction form uh, meaning the top number of the fraction the numerator is larger than the denominator in order to change that format you just divide and I always like to remember that the top number goes inside the division bar so if I have 180 over 3 the top number goes inside the top number always goes inside so that means I have 3 going into 180 so 3 goes into 180 60 times okay so now I'm gonna think about negative 9 and adding 60 to it and that does give me 51 so 51 does equal 51 that means I did solve this correctly let's move on to number 4 our last example Example number four, 3p plus 35 equals 14. Okay, I'm going to start by subtracting 35 from both sides. Get rid of this. 3p equals 14 minus 35, which equals negative 21. Now I'm going to divide both sides by 3. p equals negative 7. Now I'm going to rewrite the original problem, but instead of p, I'm going to write negative 7. 3 negative 7 plus 35 equals 14 so 3 times negative 7 is negative 21 plus 35 equals 14 so negative 21 plus 35 is 14 so that does equal 14 that means I've solved number 4 correctly let's take a recap of how to solve two step equations in solving two-step equations, you want to remember that your goal is to put the variable on one side 
of the equal sign by itself. You want to remember to use the inverse operations to isolate the variables and the inverse operations are just literally the opposite operations. The opposite of addition is subtraction and vice versa and the opposite of multiplication is division. That was my last example. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and subscribe. Did you find this video helpful? You can support this channel by donating to Super Easy Math through PayPal. There's a link to it in the description section below this video and on the Super Easy Math YouTube cover photo.